everyone, it's Matt Frazier, the Psychic Medium, and I am back live with you guys right now. And tonight, we're going to talk about something that's a little bit creepy, a little bit spooky, but I know it's going to bring you so much peace. And that is, when we pass on, have you ever wondered about the cemetery? Do we spend our time at the cemetery, right? Do you wonder if your loved ones in spirit are there? And where they spend their time in the afterlife. Well, this is something that I've grown to know so much because with doing all the readings that I've done, I've read for so many people who were buried, who were cremated, whose body was lost, believe it or not, you name it. And what I can tell you is this, is that the souls share a lot about where they spend their time on the other side. And I think that you're going to think, that it's really interesting. And first of all, I want to say hello to all of you who are joining me live. I see Linda Casavant is here. I see that Teresa is here. I see that Mary is here as well. And Marie is here. I also see that, uh, that Zeta is here as well. And I see the remixtress is here. And I see all of you guys on Instagram, all of you guys on YouTube, all of you guys on Facebook. We got to get into it. We got to talk about it. Are the dead at their headstones? But before I answer that question, I want to let you guys know the big news. I just added so many new tour stops to my tour schedule where I'm going to be giving readings up close and personal. So if you'd like to come and meet me in person, if you would like to connect with someone in spirit, you can meet me tomorrow night in Ben Salem, Pennsylvania. I'll be at Parks Casino. And then I'm heading to London, Ontario, Canada, Peterborough, Ontario, Canada, Niagara Falls, Canada, Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, Keene, New Hampshire, Concord, New Hampshire. I'm there for two nights. Los Angeles, California. It was just announced I'm coming to the United Theater on Broadway. I'm also coming to San Jose, California, Snoqualmie. I hope that's how you say it. Snoqualmie, Washington, Modesto, California. Patchog, New York. I have no, no idea where the hell that is. <laughs> Springfield, Massachusetts. We're almost sold out to Springfield, by the way. Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Dallas, Texas. Midland, Texas. Rochester, New York. And Montclair, New Jersey. If you want to come to any of those places, just go to meetmattfraser.com. And it's during those events that I'm going to be doing one thing, and that is connecting you with your loved ones in spirit. And listen, it doesn't matter where you sit during this event. It matters that you're there. I don't care if you're sitting way in the front or way in the back. If there's a message from your loved one, I will get it to you. But you got to make sure that you're there because I can only read you if you attend. So meetmattfraser.com. So first of all, I want you to know one thing. This is like the number one question that I'm asked as a psychic medium. Everyone thinks that I must be so overwhelmed when I go to the cemetery. They're like, Matt, how do you do it? How do you walk into the cemetery? Are all the souls bombarding you? Are all the souls, you know, clamoring around you? Like, you must have to avoid, avoid cemeteries at all costs. Well, the thing is, is that I can tell you that when I go to the cemetery, it is actually not what you think. The cemetery is a very peaceful place because your loved ones are not hanging out by their gravestones. They're not hanging out, you know, uh, by where they were laid to rest or, rest or where their ashes were spread. And the reason why is that your loved ones find it boring, right? Think about it. Think about if you were to die. If you were to die, where would you want to spend your time? Unless you have a thing for cemeteries, that's probably the last place on your list. But what I will tell you is that when souls go to the other side, one of the things that they find so amazing is that they get to be anywhere that they want to be. So your loved ones in spirit can spend time in the past, meaning that they can go back and visit past memories. For example, they can go back to their wedding day and watch their wedding day all over again. They can go back to the time that their child was first born. They could go back to a moment that they missed here in this world that they didn't get to be a part of. For example, as many of you, as many of you all know, Royce was born when I was on tour. I was literally on tour. I got the phone call from Alexa that her water broke. She went into, into labor early. I was trying to get back in time. I couldn't get back. I missed Royce's birth. I wasn't there. And that's something that still bothers me to this day. I wish, I wish that I could have been there. I was on FaceTime. You know, I was, I was on the phone with Alexa as it was all happening. But still, I wish I could be in that moment. That's the one thing here on earth that I regret. And I know, and what, what, Keeps me what, what keeps me so happy is I know that any moment that we miss here in this world, we can revisit in the afterlife. And that's what your loved ones find so interesting when they pass on. They can visit any person. They can visit any place. They can go anywhere and they can visit any time. So that being said, 
it's very common for when your loved ones to go to the, when your loved ones go to the other side, they start to travel. They travel back in the past. They revisit their wedding day. They revisit their high school years. Their most memorable moments that they had here in life, they'll revisit on the other side and moments that they missed. But what's also beautiful is when your loved ones get to the other side, they can also visit places that were so special to them here in this world. For example, let's say that your family had a special lake house that you used to go to every single summer. And that's something that you always hold on to. Well, when your loved ones go to the other side, they can visit that lake house. They can visit their old neighborhood. They can visit their old house. They can visit old vacation spots or places that were sentimental to them. That's the reason why you might feel a soul in your house with you. It's the reason why all of a sudden, all of a sudden you might be like, wait a minute, I just felt a spirit. That's really weird. Whose spirit was it? Well, there are a such thing as passing spirits and these passing spirits are actually souls that are doing just that. They're passing by, they're visiting a place. It could be your house because maybe you're living in a house that was uh, connected to somebody in the afterlife. doesn't mean they're living there with you, but time and time again, they might come and visit that house. It might be that you're vacationing somewhere and you feel a soul that's there. Or for example, a lot of the theaters that I go to on tour will say, Matt, oh my God, this place is haunted. Matt, I swear there's spirits in this place. And when I connect with the energy, there's not souls that are residents there, but there were souls that once performed there, worked there, and you know loved that place very much. And yet they're still connected in the afterlife to those places. I'm going to share with you an example. There was this woman that I was reading for. Her mom had passed away. And when her mom had passed away, the her one dying wish before she died was she wanted to go back to Puerto Rico. She wanted to go back to her country. She wanted to see her hometown. She wanted to see her village. She rem remembered it as a little girl, and her dream was to go back. Well, unfortunately, she passed away, and she never got to live that dream. But in the afterlife, she came back and showed me these beautiful visions of after she died, she went back to visit that hometown. She went back to visit all the places that she loved that she didn't get to here on earth, right? And think about it. Like, is there a place that you would like to see before you die? Maybe it's the Eiffel Tower. Maybe it's the Grand Canyon. Maybe it's it's one of the wonders here on earth. Well, the good news is, is that if for some reason you miss it here in this world or miss out on a moment, you can go back in time and visit in the spirit world. And it's for that reason that your loved ones in spirit don't care about being buried. They don't care about being cremated. They don't care what happens to their ashes. And thank you so much, Julie Lynn, for sending me the hearts. I so appreciate that. So I want to answer this question because Shirley's asking, she goes, well, do they know when they when we visit them at the cemetery? Absolutely. And here's a little secret, you guys. That's actually when I see the most souls at cemeteries is when there's a funeral going on or when you're going to visit your loved ones. How many times when I go to visit my own loved one's grave site, and by the way, I'm all for visiting the grave, you guys. I got to tell you, even though our loved ones don't hang out there, I still find it comforting that there's a physical place that I can go to remember my loved ones in spirit. So I visit the cemetery just like you guys do. And what's so beautiful is this, is that when I go to the cemetery and I see other people visiting their loved ones' graves, I see their loved ones there and with them. Not because their loved one is hanging out on the grave, but they're there when you're there. And it's the same thing. If you went to the to a coffee shop and you were thinking about your mom and saying, oh, mom, I miss you. Oh, mom, I wish you were here right now. Oh, mom, I really wish that that you, know, you could see your grandson and this and that. And the other thing, your mom would be sitting right in that coffee shop with you in spirit listening to that conversation the same way that your loved ones sit next to the graveside and listen to those conversations. So yeah, when you go to visit your loved one's grave, they're there. And your loved ones can hear you at the grave because Anytime you put your intention on your loved ones, they hear you, whether it is that you're holding on to their ashes, whether it is that they were buried or cremated, no matter what it is, right? When you put your intentions on your loved ones, they can hear you. And what I can also tell you is this, so many people get so nervous over this. They spend so much time thinking, oh my God, what about, what? should I be cremated? Should I not? Should I be an organ donor? Should I not? What happens if, what happens if, you know, uh, I'm buried in this place instead of this place? What happens if, should I be in a mausoleum? Should I be in the ground? What I can tell you is, is that I've had many readings where people here on earth were scared to death, no pun intended. They were so scared about where their body would be or what would happen to their body thinking, oh my God, I don't want to be cremated because I'm afraid of fire. I don't want to be in the ground because I'm afraid of bugs. I don't want to do this. 
because of X, Y, and Z, right? And the thing is, is that your loved ones actually don't care about that once they get to the other side. Because once your loved ones go to the other side, they're like, oh my God, oh my God. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm here, I'm whole. Like I, that body was just what I used here on earth, but I'm the same person on the other side. That's what's so beautiful. It's actually funny because there was this one woman that I was reading for that was so, so, so adamant about being buried in her fur coat. She wanted to be buried in her fur, fur coat because she always got cold and she was afraid that, you know, when she would be buried, that she'd get cold under, underground. So her family bundled her up, put her in her fur, in her fur coat, right? And she came through and she said to her family, thank you for the coat, but I didn't need it. Heaven is beautiful, right? And she showed me that she was out in the sunshine and she was out with other family members. That's what's so beautiful is that we leave this world and we enter into a new world, right? It's the same thing where, you know, our body is sentimental to us here in this world, right? And it's, and it's our, and it's our most prized possession. Our body is our, is our, is us, right? It's our most prized possession. It's us. But the thing is, is that once we get to the side, we realize that we take us with us, right? We take our inner, our inner self with us to the other side. So what I want you to know is this, it's almost like, it's almost like, think, think of it this way, because I've asked the other side, well, what is it like, right? Why don't you get nervous over this? Well, imagine if, imagine if I printed out your favorite picture, right? You, I, you have a picture on your phone and I took it to CVS or to Walgreens or Walmart and I printed it out and you had this beautiful picture, an eight by 10, it was your favorite picture. And imagine if I took it, I ripped it up, I put it in the shredder and I threw it away, right? You'd be like, what the hell did you do that for? Oh my God, I'm so upset, I'm so mad. But then guess what? You have a backup on your phone. You can go and you can print it out again. Same thing happens when we die, right? Is that there's a backup version of us, our soul. So it doesn't matter what happens to our body. It doesn't matter if we're cremated, buried, if our organs get don no, donated or whatever happens because we still have us on the other side. And that's the most reassuring thing that the souls tell me. So I've had many readings where, you know, for example, this just happened, you guys. It was crazy. I was doing a reading while I was on tour and there was this man who was supposed to be, supposed to be cremated and his ashes spread, but his wife was grieving too hard. And guess what? After he died, she promised him that she would spread his ashes out on the sea, but instead she kept it because she didn't want to part with him. Well, she thought that he was going to come through angry and mad and upset, but instead he came through and said, I don't care what you do with the ashes. It doesn't matter to me anymore because I'm okay and I'm fine. So you hold on to them as long as you want. You can hold on to them. You can keep them. You can do whatever you want with them because I am fine. I'm whole on the other side. There was also a time where this woman came to me. She was so upset, you guys, because her dad was so afraid of being cremated. He was supposed to be buried here in this world. And don't you know that she knew her dad's wishes? She promised her dad, you know, when he got sick, yes, you're going to get buried. You know, you're going to be, you're going to be at the family uh, cemetery. He wants to be buried with his mom and his dad and his little uh, brother that had passed away. And his daughter promised him it would happen, promised him it would happen. And then, and then this is where the story takes a turn for the worst. Don't you know that he passed on and to save money, her stepmother said, change of plans when she went to the funeral home, said, we're actually not going to bury him. We're going to go and cremate him instead because I guess, I don't know, there was extra charges or whatever the hell it may be. She wanted him cremated. Anyway, they, there was a huge family feud. There was a huge, th there was this huge argument that had happened. The daughter did everything that she could to save her dad from cremation because she knew that, you know, this was, these were his wishes. And unfortunately she failed. You know, her, her stepmother had him cremated. She uh, did what she wanted. And long story short, this daughter was so upset. She was so visibly shook. And she carried this guilt for a year after her dad's passing. She stopped talking to her stepmother. She stopped talking to her family. She was so upset. She thought that her dad hated her in heaven. Well, don't you know that he came through during the reading and said, it's okay. What she did was wrong but I don't want you to think that I'm mad, upset, or angry. It's okay now. I realize that the afterlife is real. I realize that my, my body is back whole. So that's what I want to share with you is that it doesn't have any impact on your loved ones. Your loved ones think that, thinks that it does, right? 
They, there's so many people. Like, for example, there was this other man that I was connecting with. He spent so much time picking out a mausoleum for himself. He kind of came up with the mausoleum that he wanted. He wanted to be in a certain aisle of the mausoleum at a certain height by the water, all of these things, right? And then come to find out, come to find out in the afterlife. And it's actually funny. I, I shouldn't say it's funny, but it was. He picked out this mausoleum, you guys, as if it was his house. Like he would go and visit it every week and he wanted to make sure it was in a bright part. They got a lot of sun because it was like inside, outside. He wanted to make sure he was inside on a certain row at a certain height so he could see this and he could see that. And then when he gets to the afterlife, he realized that he wasted his money here on earth, that that money could have went to his children or other people, right? But it, because on the other side and, and, you know, in the afterlife, he realized he didn't need that. He didn't need he didn't need that that mausoleum because his soul was free. Your soul is not attached to a headstone. Your soul is not attached to to ashes. Your soul is not attached to your physical body. Now, don't get me wrong. We are, for example, there's times and Lisa's laughing at me. There's um oh my god, thank you so much. And David said this is a very interesting stream. I love that. Thank you so much. I'm happy that's your first time being here. So what I want you to know is don't get me wrong, right? There's times when people come to my events and I'll go and uh, see that they have a loved one's ashes with them. Like their loved one will tell me, oh, she's got my ashes or, oh, she's got my urn or, oh, oh my God. In Pennsylvania, the last time I was there, <laughs> this father came through and said, my wife has my teeth. <laughs> oh my God. I have to say a prayer because I'm going to Ben Salem, Pennsylvania tomorrow. I can only imagine what the hell I'm going to see. I'm also coming to Greensburg, Pennsylvania as well. But yeah, the wife had his teeth, you guys, right? But the thing was, is that they were attached to that. You're, you know, even though your your loved one's teeth and ashes and, and, you know, bones do hold on to their energy, it doesn't hang on to your soul. So it's no different than like our necklace or our shirts, like, like my necklace, my shirt, everything, everything in this office that I touch and I use every day, this holds on to my energy. So if I were to die in a medium where to hold one of my jewelry pieces or one of the things from my office, they probably would get an impression of me because of the fact that all of these things hold on to my energy, right? Because I use them every day. So what I want you to know, and Debbie thinks that's so funny over the teeth, that's true. I never know what the hell is going to come through during these events. I never know what the hell people are going to bring, uh, bring with them. Glenda goes, I love your commentaries. You're fantastic. Glenda, it's not me. It's the dead. I'm telling you what the hell. You think I, you can't make this shit up, I got to tell you. Um, oh my God, and, Green, and Amy's coming to see me in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. I'm excited about that. And by the way, that's the closest I'm coming to Pittsburgh. So I know everyone's like, nah, you're coming to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. You're coming to Pittsburgh. I'm coming to Greensburg, which is right outside of Pittsburgh. So if you want to join me, just go to meetmattfraser.com. Tickets are already on sale for that event. Okay, let's talk about this. Really important, you guys. What I want you all to know is this. When I connect with the other side, when I speak to your loved ones in the afterlife, what is so beautiful is that the things that were left behind here in this world, their energy might be attached to, but their soul isn't attached to. And I want to share with you a story of how this, how I can validate this to you to give you a little bit of, of peace. There was this woman that I was connecting with. I'll never forget it. It happened in Providence, Rhode Island. And she came to my show. She lost her, her brother. And her and her brother were like estranged for a while. And, and long story short, she uh, ended up. She ended up going and being there at, at his funeral service and cremation. And then, long story short, she got called a few weeks later to go and pick up his remains. He was cremated. Well, she came to my show and I was reading for her brother, reading for her brother. And then she said to me, "This is my brother. He's in here." And she had this beautiful necklace made with her brother's ashes. And I was like, "Oh my God, that's so beautiful!" And I went to touch the necklace, you guys. And I was like, "Uh oh." I didn't know what to do. I almost shit my pants. I was like, I can only imagine I am not good at hiding my emotions like at all. Like people can tell if I'm lying, if I'm telling the truth. Like I am like such a bad lie. Like I can't, if like my face says it all. So I made a face and she was like, looked at me and I looked at her and I was like, um, can I tell you everything? And she was like, yeah, why? I'm like, um, I don't know how to say this. I'm like, but your brother's not in that ashes. I don't know who, I, I don't know who is in that necklace, but it is not your brother. And she goes, oh, she says, Matt, you're never going to believe it. She says the funeral home actually disclosed this. She says there was a mix up with 
the uh, cremain. She says, because it took so long for her to pick them up or whatever it may be, there were some boxes that got, that got mixed up in her brothers. It could be either one or two people. So the funeral home disclosed it to her. They told her that they felt without a doubt it was her brother. But, but when I went, when I went and held that necklace, it was not her brother. Now his soul wasn't connected to that, but I could feel the energy and the energy of her brother who I was talking to in spirit and the brother and the, and the person that I was feeling was actually a woman. The, the person that I was feeling in the necklace was a woman. She wasn't in the necklace, but her energy was right. It's almost like, and, and you know, to, to understand energy, what it, what it feels like, it's almost like if I were to spray, if I were to spray a man's perfume and a woman's perfume, right? And you can tell the difference just by smelling it. You know, men's men's perfumes or colognes are very, you know, musty, very strong, very heavy. Women's women's colognes are very light and eerie and foofy, right? Is that even a word, foofy, right? That's what it's like with energy, when we feel spirit energy. So you can tell if an energy is a male energy, a female energy, so on and so forth. And that energy clings onto our clothes just like perfume does. So that was one of the craziest readings that I've ever done. <laughs> and Powder Pop goes, what the hell? Yeah, it can really happen. So I want to share that with all of you because that's a reading that I'll never forget. Oh my God, Heather goes, that's my biggest fear. Listen, it only happened that once. It only happened that once. All right, I gotta, I gotta come clean. It didn't, ha it didn't happen more than once. It didn't happen more than once. It didn't happen more than once. I gotta come clean. Oh boy, I wish that there was something in here like rum or something. It's only, it's only ginger ale. Why she sprite? All right, you ready for this? <laughs> happened to my own family. <laughs> happened to my own family. Oh my god, should I tell the story? All right, I'm gonna have to tell you the story. All right, Lisa, I'm gonna tell you the story. Here's what happened. Here's what happened. All right, come in close. Come in close because this happened. My mother-in-law, Sharon, you know her from the TV show. You know she's a little bit, mm, a little bit out there. So she had her, her dog cremated. Her dog, Lilo, was cremated. Okay? So she has the dog cremated. She brings the dog home in a box. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh. I'm sorry. I don't mean to laugh. Oh, God, help me. God, help me. So she brings the dog home. <laughs> the story all right she brings the whole the, the dog home in a box you guys okay all right i'm telling it she she, she brings the whole the, the dog home in a box she says i got lilo i go oh my god that's so nice that's so nice so now all of a sudden i go when i hold the box it's got lilo in it okay and there's there's lilo in the box and I get other dogs. There's like Lilo and other dogs in the box. So now I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. So I'm like, Sharon, I'm like, I don't know what happened here. I'm like, but Lilo's in this box and you got like 10 other pets in this box. Like it's not just Lilo. So she goes, oh yeah, I know, Matt. I know. She's like, when you go to the crematory nowadays, she goes, there's an option. It's extra. She goes, if you just want your dog's ashes, but they can do like a group cremation where they take like everyone's pets and put them together. And like everyone gets a bit of everybody's, like they put all the dogs and all the cats and everybody together. And then they just split up the ashes and it's cheaper. She's like, so I went with that option. <laughs> so I was like, well, thank God. <laughs> Thank God, you know. But literally now, every time I go to her house, every time I go to, to every time I go to the house, yes, Lilo has friends. Every time I go to the house now, and I walk by my mother-in-law's, uh, what's it called, dog box of cream cream mains, right? There's it's like the freaking petting zoo. It's it's unbelievable. Yeah, Jane, like 101 Dalmatians. <laughs> so my mother-in-law was cheap. She didn't, she, she, she's like, and I go, why didn't you just spend the extra money to get like your own dog's cremains? And she's like, well, I didn't know if they were going to lie to me. She's like, so I'm like, you know what? I might as well just take the cheaper option and get a little bit of everybody's. And then I don't have to worry. And I'm like, Sharon, I'm like, do you see what I freaking do for a living? Like I would have told you if it was your dog or somebody else's. I'm like, but now you've got the whole freaking petting zoo with the house. So anyways, that's the story. <laughs> Lisa said she's never heard of such a thing. Really? Call the pet crematory and ask them. I don't know. I no, I don't remember that being an option for me either when I had my my uh when I had my cats cremated. I I, I don't remember that, but who knows? 
who knows? I don't know. My mother-in-law, I call her as seen on Sharon because if there's a way to save money, she's going to do it. She's going to find it. She's like, she's like coupon Sally. That's just what she is. But anyways, I want to share this with you because don't stress if you don't get to visit your loved one's grave, they're not judging you. Don't stress if you don't know what to do with your loved one's ashes. Don't stress over where they're buried, how they're cremated, what happens to them because the thing is, is that your loved ones don't care. Chances are, you're caring more about what happened to your loved one's body than your own loved ones. They're past that. The moment that they realize that they're fine and in heaven, they're like, screw the gravestone, screw this. I'm fine. I'm good. Believe me, because I talk to them every single day. So I want to let you know that. Oh, uh, Sinesi saying that happened with, with their dog as well. See that? There's someone else. There's someone else who had that same situation happen. But anyway, anyway, that being said, what I want you to know is this, is that your loved ones are always with you no matter what. So even if you can't get, a, get to a loved one's grave, maybe you moved away, whatever it is, talk to your loved ones, they hear you and they are a part of you. And by the way, while I have you all here, really important, if you didn't hear, guys, I just announced new tour schedule, a new tour schedule. I'm so excited about this. Tomorrow night, I will be in Ben Salem, Pennsylvania, giving live readings at the Parks Casino. But if you can't see me in Ben Salem, Pennsylvania tomorrow, I'm also going to Greensburg, Pennsylvania, which is right next to Pittsburgh. I'm also coming to these places as well. You ready? May 1st, I'll be in London, Ontario, Canada. Then I'm coming to Peterborough, Ontario, Canada. Niagara Falls, Canada. I'm coming to Winnipeg, Canada. Keene, New Hampshire. Concord, New Hampshire. I'm there for two nights. Los Angeles, California. San Jose, California. Snoqualmie, Washington. Modesto, California. I'm also coming to Patchogue, New York. I'm coming to Springfield, Massachusetts, but we're almost sold out. Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. It's my first time ever coming there. Dallas, Texas, uh, Midland, Texas, Rochester, New York, and Montclair, New Jersey. Guys, it's during these events that I'm going to be going in, connecting you with your loved ones in spirit. So if you want to join me, tickets are on sale right now at meetmattfraser.com. And if you hurry, there are meet and greet options as well, where you can meet me before the show even starts. So if that's something that you're interested, in, just go to meetmattfraser.com. And I also have some news to share with you as well. I'm taking a few weeks off and I'm doing some online readings in June. So April is all gone for, for, for online readings. There's no more left. May is completely sold out for online readings, but there's three dates left for June. So starting June 8th, I will be doing some online readings here in this office. So if you can't make it to see me on tour, or maybe you're coming to see me on tour, but you want to see me, uh, uh, you want to see me online as well. It's $22 to sign up but I can only allow a limited amount of people. So if you want to join me, here's what you need to do. Go to meetmattfraser.com, meetmattfraser.com. That's where you can go to reserve your spot. Once you get to meetmattfraser.com, you can click on online readings. You can click on tour schedules. I hope, I hope, I hope that I get to meet you in person. And if your city or state is not on there, you can also go to the next online reading in June. I am so excited, you guys. I can't wait to help connect you with your loved ones. And this year, I've taken on more tour, more tour stops than ever because it's my goal and my mission to reach as many people as I possibly can, and that means you. So if you want to join me, meetmattfraser.com. Head on over to reserve your spot. And remember, there's no such thing as dead. Your loved ones are always with you. And if this video helped you in some way, please share it on your page because I know that it's going to help somebody out, else out who needs to know about their loved one in spirit. And that being said, I hope you get the most amazing signs. Trust in the signs that you're getting. And remember, when you get signs from your loved ones, talk to your loved ones. Say, Dad, I know that that was you. Or Mom, was that you? Ask questions. Talk to your loved ones. Conversation is a two-way street. And your loved ones in spirit love hearing from you just as much as you love hearing from them. So I will see you tomorrow night in Ben Salem, Pennsylvania. And for the rest of you, take a look at my tour schedule. I'm signing off right now. My tickets are online at meetmattfraser.com. So here's all the places that you can come and see me in 2024. I can't wait to help you reconnect with heaven. You ready? Take a look.